find the place and the time for technology, it's not going away. It's only becoming more innovative. It's developing and getting better and better with time. And I think as teachers, we have to accept that because that's the world our kids live in. Um, our kids go home, they spend time on games, and they're getting that immediate feedback. When, if they're jumping the bridge and they get the point or if they fall down and they have to start all over, you know, they're getting immediate feedback all the time. And we have to harness that and we have to look at how can I bring that approach into my classroom to give these students feedback because that's what they're used to. They're used to that immediate response. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are so glad that you are here with us today. We have some amazing teachers with us today, and they're from not Nashville, where we wish everybody was from, but they're from Kentucky. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, because what I'd like for you to do is give your name, what you teach, and the grade you teach. And you got that? So... And then you can think about what you teach and the grade you teach too and see how closely related what you do is to what they do. All right, ladies, take it away. Who wants to go first? Uh, you, I'm ready. Let's right. do it. Go first. So my name is Catherine Beals. I teach in Bowling Green, Kentucky at Plano Elementary. I teach fifth grade. I've been in the classroom about 10 years. We're currently teaching reading and reading and writing. Hey. Hi, I'm Alicia Metter, and I'm the curriculum coordinator at Plano Elementary here in Warren County. And this is year 15 for me. So I taught a combination of third grade, fourth grade. I was an instructional coach for a few years, and now I'm the curriculum coordinator. What is your fifth grade I taught for? Let me see here. I don't want anybody to be able to count up how many years I've been working. But it was about 15 years that I taught. Fifth grade. Wow. Maybe Ted. I may be I may be gunning on the five. But that's my favorite grade. Yes. Because they're transitioning from like I'm kind of a baby or not a baby, but you know. But so yeah. He's so good. I've got it all figured out. I can go get my apartment tomorrow. Well, and in fifth grade, your best teaching strategy is debating because yeah. they are ready to go toe yeah. to toe. They are. Right. So yeah. the classroom discussions yeah. get to fifth grade because I used yeah. to teach third. Yeah. And the level of intensity is <laughs> yeah. It's always exciting. Yeah, it is. One time when I was teaching fifth graders, they had this little attitude about a seating chart. Mm -hmm. And I just said, okay, right, pick up your chair. We're going we're gonna to take them outside. And they were like, what? I'm like, yeah, we're just going to take them outside, line them up in the hall. They're like, well, no, what? Yeah, we're taking it back. I'm not, no, get back. Get your chair. We're going out. They had no chairs for two weeks. Do you think they ever complained about where they sat again? Where well, I found that. No, ladies and gentlemen, they, they did not. <laughs> they did not. Those were pre-tech days, so you had to get super creative. Now you can just take away an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> over. It's over. But technology, when I started teaching, was not in the classroom at all. I mean, our form of technology, sadly, was a whiteboard. And that was the new technology that I had in my very first year of teaching. They're like, we're going to get these new boards, and you're going to be able to write. They weren't even magnetic. <laughs> Honest to Pete. So... The evolution that I've been able to see, I feel like a pioneer, but it's been unbelievable. And where we are today with technology in the classroom is so far from where I ever even imagined it could go. I mean, so far. So from the point that you started teaching, yes, so folks, 10, 15 years mm -hmm. to today, what have you seen as the evolution yeah. and where did you see AI? Because in your entire career, AI has been present mm -hmm. in education. You just may not mm -hmm. have realized it, right? And you may not have realized it, but AI has been around 60s. So where have you seen technology from the beginning of your career to present right. in the classroom and where where does AI fit into that equation? Well, the first thing that I think think back to is my first five years in the classroom, I was given a curriculum, right? 
And it was always geared to a grade level student. And so the majority of your students were able to access that curriculum for the most part. And you would scaffold or extend for students that were on the edges. Well, so much of our classroom, the diverse, like the beautiful diversity that we see now, yeah. there is no typical student anymore. Um, there are even students that are maybe similar um, academic levels, have completely different backgrounds, experiences, right background knowledge to access. So the role of technology now for educators is to use that to address the, a level of readiness. I need to get all of my students from different experiences, different backgrounds. I need to get them all on a launching point and technology can help me get there because I can't call any curriculum company and ask for 30 different curriculums for that are tailored to student. Technology can do that. So that's kind of the role for technology as a teacher. Yeah. In this One of the best in class is when you've got a great curriculum right. and technology interconnect you really that they, they really have to be married at yeah. this point or you're not going to reach every kid yeah. they're going to yeah. fall through the cracks so yeah. you can even go to the flip side and think about on the student side if we do not have technology like literate in technology and digital practices we're shutting down tons i mean millions of oh. careers yeah so you have to think of it from the yeah. first it's impossible it's impossible to do any job without a technology right we had to prepare our students. But, that would be that would be a devastating yeah. blow to all the potential careers they could explore. Yeah. If they don't start exploring now. Yeah. When they're under our wing where we can protect them, yeah. teach them responsible use. They need us to do that for them now so later they can really use those odds. Oh, yeah, so true. So true. Well, and you started in the classroom. Yes. So you've got that experience with the little, you know, right. eight through three, we always think of the little. And then moved into coaching teachers, right? which is a little bit of a challenge because your teachers, just like your students, come from all backgrounds. They right. come from, I love technology too. You know, I never, I don't even have a TV in my classroom or in my home, which is fine. No, no shade on people that don't have TV. But if you're in a classroom and we need you to use technology, how do you work with the teachers to kind of bring them along and Think about just your coaching and admin out of experience. How have you, um, how have you taken your entry point in at that in your career at that point to where you are today in moving the needle with teachers and I, technology? Absolutely. So when I first started teaching, we were not one to one in our classroom. Like iPads were a big thing. You was trying to download all the apps and get everyone. Um, involved in that through a center rotation. Yep. And I can remember later on in my career trying to get donors choose um, mm -hmm. a support system so that I could get more devices in my classroom so my kids had access. You know, I needed that center rotation so that I could provide that small group, you know, individualized instruction. Right. Well, now we're one to one. And so the freedoms that we have are the things that we're able to do now because every student in our building has a device in their hand. Um, it's really unthought of, of all the different things that we can access. Well, from the coaching perspective, it's teaching our teachers how to integrate that in appropriately, how to yeah. find the place and the time for technology. It's not going away. It's only becoming more innovative. It's developing and getting better and better with time. And I think as teachers, we have to accept that because that's the world our kids live in. Um, our kids go home, they spend time on games, and they're getting that immediate feedback. What if they're jumping the bridge and they get the point, or if they fall down and they have to start all over, you know, they're getting immediate feedback all the time. And we have to harness that, and we have to look at how can I bring that approach into my classroom to give these students feedback, because that's what they're used to. They're used to that immediate response. Yeah. And how can I bring that in the classroom and, and utilize that um, as leverage for instruction? Yeah, yeah. I refer to it as a drive-through mentality. We drive up to a window. Five minutes later or less, mm -hmm. we get, you know, we get our food. In 10 minutes, we've eaten it. I mean, we're, we're just like, right. you know, very, our expectations. I mean, that, that, huh? that, just think about that. I mean, if my kid asks me for food, it's going to take me five minutes to figure out what I got in the cupboard to right. fix. It's not a fire. So I think, the expectations that our economy, our community has on just 
practically everything right. is unbelievable. And then if you go to McDonald's or a bank or anywhere, it's all digital. Right. I mean, you're going to get your money through an ATM. You're going to get food through a panel. So, I mean, everything is digitized. We don't have something like that in our classrooms to just teach them proper use. Right. And appropriate, inappropriate, then we have failed as an yeah. education. So, so it, in my person, I tend to so. uh, AI has, you know, like I said, it's been around for a very long time. It's been around since the 60s. You guys have heard me say that before, like Chinese words. But um, it's iterate. And this generative AI has opened up, you know, some of us refer to it as a Pandora's box. But it's opened up a window to the future that we never considered before. All right. You know, and I can remember when Siri came out, which is a form of AI mm -hmm. that when it that was introduced, people were freaked out. But right. you could ask a computer something and an inanimate object can hear you and respond to you. Mm -hmm. And that was freaky. And then suddenly when you look at your phone. Everything you talked about was in your, you know, in your Facebook feed or whatever, in your Instagram. So now we've come a step further, right? Now we've come a step further with generative AI. So how has generative AI, and you can talk about AI in general, but how specifically okay. has generative AI impacted just the expectations your kids have mm -hmm. in the classroom? So how has generative AI impacted? What the kids are expecting right. in the classroom. Like you said, they have games at home. Right. They have immediate feedback with those games. Right. They get immediate reward with those games. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Absolutely. What are you doing in your classroom to give them that kind of adrenaline rush Absolutely. in your classroom? Is that your competition? So what's exciting is with generative AI, especially students love to create. They love to be creative. They love to make. So instead of teachers looking from this, we've got to teach kids not to be irresponsible with AI. We're spending so much of our focus on teaching them not to be irresponsible with generative AI. Let's let's flip the script. Yes, we need to address that, but let's spend our energy on how what it can do, right? Like how it can get students out of writer's block, how it can give students an example when they're absent or when I'm with another student, right? Like what can it do? Students know there's one of me and 30 of them. I preach it all day long. I was like, I love you. You know I'm coming. There's one of me. There's 30 of you. Now with AI, I can say, can you ask your assistant and give me some time, yeah. right? Can you ask your assistant and give me some time. So we're using AI. We're focusing on the positives, right? How can it get me unstuck? How can it take some of my creative ideas and, and get me to the next level? How can it write? Rather than this is what we don't do. So there's a that. shift now. Yeah. Um, so we need to focus on the bright spots, on the positive. Of course, address, you know, some the irresponsible behavior we're not going to do. Yeah. But the more we focus, the more we say, don't touch the stove, what's your kid going to do? It's true. Touch the stove, <laughs> right? So let's focus on, on the positive of what it can do. Yeah. Um, honestly, the kids are going to teach us. You know, whenever you give it a new program, a new device, kids, I remember we, when we roll out new curriculums, new screeners, kids tell us. They do. Right. The ins and outs of how it runs. The kids can teach us, and that's okay, right? We're going to keep an eye on them. We're going to make sure they're safe, but they let them, let them teach us a little bit. Yeah, I agree with that. And and when they teach us something that you're like, probably should know that, then that's an opportunity oh, well, to watch. Hey. Absolutely. Yeah, but as but, a, a good parent or a good teacher, you're in the room and you're present yeah. to have that conversation. You yeah. don't need to just shy away. You yeah. are going to experience that at some point yeah. when it be in the safety of our classroom. Yeah. Right? I love that. I think that it's that mind shift of being the giver of all information and being the facilitator of learning. Yes. You know, you're that guiding step, connecting the, helping them connect the dots while they're using that inquiry-based learning to get them where they need to go. Yeah. I love yeah. that. It's almost like we can provide the safe place. They're the one. Right. Well, I, we just provide the safe parameters yeah. to protect them from things that, you know, are outside of their control. Yeah, you're facilitating the environment and you've set it up. So that they can learn freely in that environment. Because at the end of the day, that's what you want is kids who own their own learning. So and want to move on with it. 